The gentlelady yields back. The chair now recognizes the gentlelady from Colorado, Ms. Carvero, for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Chairman Lucas, and uh, to you and Ranking Member Lofgren for this um, very exciting hearing um, on AI, which I think we've all been following um, closely. And um, as a, a doctor as well, um, as Dr. McCormick um, mentioned earlier, I'm following advancements that are happening in the healthcare sector. Uh, new forms of biomedical technology and data are transforming the way that we research, diagnose, and treat health issues. And there's a lot of enthusiasm using AI to combine different forms of data, such as those from genomics, healthcare records, um, medical imaging to provide clinicians with critical insights to make clinical decisions for individual patients. Um, so Dr. Matheny, uh, can you describe what you think the technological benchmarks are, um, are needed to realize benefits, and um, especially in the medical field in the next two, five, ten years and beyond? Thank you for the question. I think applications to uh, medical diagnostics, to personalized medicine, uh, to home health care are profound. Um, and I, I think that uh, establishing the sort of evaluative framework that we're going to need in order to assess the added value of these technologies over current practice is one that's really important um, for the FDA, for Medicare, for Medicaid, um, to be able to evaluate what, uh, what advantages these technologies bring. Um, I really liked the expression that with, with breaks we can drive faster. And this is the, the history of uh, technology innovation in the United States, is that we have, um, we have had government testing and evaluation as a propellant um, for innovation. Because when consumers can trust that technologies are safe, they use them more. Um, and that allowed the United States to lead in, in pharmaceuticals and in other health technologies because of that framework. I'm going to um, kind of expand on your, your notion of trust. Um, Dr. McCormick also mentioned an article in the New York Times talking about how doctors are using um, ChatGPT to communicate with their patients um, and looking for a more empathetic way of, of responding to them. Um, as somebody that trained in medicine, that at first made me chuckle, then it made me worried um, a little bit. And then as I read the article, I, I, I must admit that the answers that it came up with um, were actually quite good and in keeping with the um, some of the training around communication um, that uh, we use. But um, I think if I was a patient and realized that my an um, doctor was not answering something themselves, uh, but using a, a separate technology um, uh, to create more empathy um, and communication between us, I'd, I'd also be a little bit concerned. So looking at that and then also realizing um, in the article that it, um, I, in, in my thoughts, um, something like AI would be very good at the radiology aspect, right? Of, of making sure that it was reading mammograms faster, for example, um, but it also pointed out that it was leading to a lot of false positives that were leading to unnecessary tests. So how in the future, as patients, as providers, um, can we ensure confidence in the different kind of applications that um, AI and, and um, these technologies are going to be used for in medicine? And that's really for anybody, starting with Dr. Matheny. Um, I, I do think that, that more testing uh, in which the uh, comparison arm is current practice so that we can evaluate does it have uh, the same precision recall uh, as um, existing, for example, diagnostic practices um, is, is going to be essential. I think society as a whole is going to be working to adapt on what we sort of recognize as being sincere communication when more and more communication will be generated by language models. Um, but I do think that one benefit of some of these models is that they don't get tired, they don't get stressed. So if you're a care provider and you're working under sleep deprivation and time pressure, you might not be giving as much explanation as is really needed for a patient. So there could be real benefits there. Just to add to that, I think this concept of human machine teaming and trust is really important here. Uh, you had the fortune of working with the armed forces um, for the first part of my career, and I watched the training culture that they had. They knew, they trained well with their teammates, and they knew what their colleague was going to do and not do because they had spent that time training. And I think um, there's a lot of interesting measures and metrics for designing systems that maximize that trust. So imagine a doctor or um, actually part of their training, learning how to work with these systems, spending those hours so that they know when they can re rely on it, when they can't rely on it. I just think it's an important framing for the future of AI to make sure that that's part of the team and is, is calibrated correctly, that trust, and we can use it appropriately. 
Really appreciate your answers. Um, in particular, I think Dr. Matheny, I thought about burnout um, as well as we've come um, in particular out of a pandemic where we're going to be facing more physician shortage. What are the um, applications to, to read over patient charts, to compile um, information, to write um, long notes um, that doctors don't necessarily need to spend hours on? Um, and so very, very much appreciate those comments. Okay.